Hey, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend. Uh, maybe you've joined us before, maybe not, but you're welcome either way. I, I notice, you know, this time of year, some of the churches are having these high teas. It's, I drink tea. I tell you, it's my, it is just my beverage of choice. And high teas are so much fun. If you've never been to one and you have the opportunity, you need to go. It's just such a girl thing and so enjoyable. Well, anyway, I always start with tea. Why don't you know why? And uh, I have a wonderful guest today. Her name is Cynthia Henry, and she's from Detroit. She's an author, a retired school teacher, and she's written a book on one of my very favorite Bible characters, and that is Leah in the Old Testament, number one wife of Jacob, and uh, did not have an easy life. And as I have studied this and then gone through her book, we can only imagine what the family dynamics were. Just uh, make your head hit, just make your head hurt to think of uh, going on with the two wives, you know, and they kind of jealous and he had a favorite and kids favorites and so forth. Uh, you get into it and... Uh, Cynthia has done a good job of, of bringing out a lot of those things and a lot of the things that would go on in that kind of a family structure. I managed for you uh, to meet her, very charming lady. And we're going to, uh, Stephanie are going to make an asparagus spinach pasta salad. It's a, uh, oh, it's kind of a nice springtime, summertime, and I think probably very satisfying uh, salad. Going to see how it goes. Uh, some of the things that go into the dressing look pretty interesting. So I'll join her for that in just a second. But before we do, I've offered you this book uh, several times. But last night, I thought I'm going to offer at least one more time. It's the 365 Read Aloud Bedtime Bible Stories. The reason I thought about it is because I made the decision at the beginning of the year to read it, you know, along with all the hundreds of children, hopefully, who are reading it and their parents are reading it to them. And I made the decision to start in January, and I'm right on target with it. It has one story on each page and a couple of questions at the bottom of the page, and so it takes very, very little time. And I'm having so much fun with it. I have, I read the Bible morning and evening, and I read the Daily Light at night. And so I picked this up to read it along at night too. So if you would like to have one for yourself or for children or grandchildren, um, just write to me for any, any amount at all. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida 33758. And uh, if you want to mail a check or something, and if you use your credit card, debit card, 1-800-229-0059, I would just ask that you make the gift just as good as you possibly can is how we stay on the air. And I think you might enjoy it as much as I do. Being a great grandmother, I'm reading those bedtime Bible stories. Are you impressed, Stephanie? I am so very impressed yeah. with you, Earthling Rippy. You know, sometimes with the questions at the bottom, I have to go back <laughs> and read <laughs> <and> look. <laughs> I gotta confess. Uh -huh. Well, she's been traveling, this girl. Yes, I went to Tennessee, my parents' 50th wedding anniversary. We went up and had a little cookout for them. It was fabulous. I flew this time. I usually drive, but I really enjoyed flying. <laughs> Tell me, were the lines as horrible as, as we uh, No, I flew out of a little tiny airport in St. Pete Clearwater, the oh. St. Pete Clearwater Airport. There was no line. There was nothing. It was fabulous. And then I flew into Chattanooga, which is a smaller, a smaller airport. One. No lines, no problems. Yeah. Everyone was so nice. Oh. It was fabulous. Well, also, um, let's see, all the kids were there, weren't they? Uh, well, me and my younger brother and my older sister, my older brother couldn't make it. But you had it exactly what they wanted. Yep. They yep, wanted a family cookout. Yep. That's so, what they wanted, so that's what we did. 50 years, boy, that's... Uh, that's not, a milestone. It is, mm -hmm. and not a lot of marriages are making mm -hmm. it there anymore. True. So. All right, I'm going to chop up cashews. You're going to chop, yep, you have cashews. We have uh -huh. spinach. We have some asparagus that we cut up. We put a little oil over it, mm -hmm. a little salt, and we baked it. But let me tell you, for summertime, you know, it gets so hot, you can make this on the grill. Don't yeah, even you turn can. your oven on. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to avoid And it just kind summer. of uh, softens it up a mm -hmm. little bit. Mm -hmm. That's all. You that's still all want a crunch, for. yeah. 
And then we have pasta that we've already um, cooked. So then we have some onions, some green onions I'm gonna put in the blender. What, what is your favorite vegetable? My favorite vegetable? You've never been asked that in your whole life. I really haven't. <laughs> because growing up we only this ate is corn. Mine. It is? The Gro asparagus. Shit. Growing up we only ate corn and green beans. That was well, our. Take your pick. I know. So, <laughs> but mini, mini, when I got older, I started really liking broccoli and cauliflower. So, yeah. When my tastes evolved. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so I like we have cauliflower. Green onions. We have salt. Mm -hmm. We have vinegar, and soy sauce that I'm going to put in the blender, and we're going to start blending that up. And that's what I'm wanting to taste. Yeah, the, the dressing. Yeah. Yes. It all smells really good. And then I'm going to, um, I'm just going to stream some olive oil in. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we should talk during this. <laughs> well, if we have anything to say. Yeah, nothing important right now. We have um, an awful lot of talk, awful lot to talk about, you know, when she's been gone. There it is. When she, when she's gone, it's just not right around here. Yeah, right. It's, it's just... so quiet. Actually, I just stay holed up in my <laughs> office. So. <laughs> well. So yes, it while was you were gone, trip. I had an absolutely wonderful weekend. So. That's good. <laughs> I wasn't so sure. <laughs> oh, I know what I'm tasting. A little bit too much of. Uh, is and that I, too I much would, oil? Uh, no, the, the vinegar, because I'm not oh, a vinegar Oh, really? Person. I love vinegar, so let's see. Yeah, you see. tell us. You like okay, it? Okay, no. <laughs> That's a little too much vinegar. <laughs> well, let's put it together. Maybe We'll put it together, but use less vinegar. Oh, maybe, maybe, um, here, let me maybe smile. Maybe that will absorb some <laughs> of us. Well, you never wow. see this kind of honesty on the on the food network. Yeah, that's a that's a lot of vinegar. Okay, yeah. so that's baby spinach. We have um, the um, asparagus that we <laughs> baked. It's just we just <laughs> baked enough so it's not so hard. It's still got a crunchy yeah. texture to and it. It had a little olive oil and a little salt on yep. it. Yep. And then I'm gonna put some pasta in here. <laughs> I love the look on your oh face gosh, when you that, tasted that. And I love vinegar, so I can't believe you uh -huh. were so. Uh, uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Let's, Let's see what, how much vinegar is in it. Um, six tablespoons. Would you cut yeah, that in three. half? Yeah, three. Yeah. 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 I mean, it still has, a, without the vinegar, it's still a very nice taste. Yeah, it's, but it, it is. But it was just that vinegar. And especially with those uh, fresh green onions. Ground Hello. Like that. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to toss it up. You want to pour some of the dressing in? Mm -hmm. So I've decided, because um, I always like to watch what episode we air, like, uh -huh. each day. That's good. Because I like to put the recipe up on my fan page, my mm -hmm. Facebook page. Yeah. Well, the one we aired today was from 2013. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what happened to me, but I was skinny then. <laughs> I'll have so, to look at that. Yes, so I've decided it's going to be all salads for a while because holy Toledo. Yeah, she really looks uh, just in Wow, wait, no, she? wait till you see this. I was watching it going, somebody <laughs> went on an eating extravaganza or something and it was me. These are cashews. Those are cashews, and we're going to put some Parmesan. Mm -hmm. Lots of Parmesan, because mm -hmm. you can never have enough Parmesan no. cheese. Love it. So right. I had a salad for lunch. That's the whole point of my story, mm. and it was delicious. Well, I've got to take a look at that program. Yes. I'll, I I'll don't pull it up for you. You're going to be like, wow, what happened to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> you look just the same. It's because you exercise and do all the right stuff. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. This will surely absorb some of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still cut it in half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of vinegar. Well, this is the most honest. You you want this? It's just you want to cut the vinegar in half because mm -hmm. it really does. Because the rest the of the dressing is great good. with that Worcestershire and the ground up on, uh, onions and mm -hmm. all. So. <laughs> I'm sure they're just real enthused <laughs> about this. Yes, please get if right on your computer and order it. Any chance at all that you watch this <laughs> recipe? It's absolutely free. Uh, email us or write to us. We'll get it right out to you. And now I want you to meet my new friend, Cynthia Henry, and you're going to love what she has to say. Stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen. Or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. Well, 
it is the middle of May as we make this program, and Cynthia has come in from Detroit, where you said it was pretty cold there. Yes, it was. It was when was snow? A couple days ago? Yes, I believe it was Monday. And it, it didn't stick, but it was, um, you know, you could see it coming down, and you really could feel it. It was cold. Are you glad to be in Florida for a oh, little yeah. bit? <laughs> it's nice to have this little break in the weather. So hopefully I can take some of this back with me. When yeah, I'm there. that would be nice. And can, boy, it can get hot in Detroit, too. Yes, it I've, can. I've been there when it just seemed like the air didn't move. It was just so mm -hmm. hot and humid. Um, were you uh, raised in a Christian home? Yes, I was. Mm -hmm. um, I um, was going to church at a very early age. My parents, you know, took us there. Mm -hmm. And um, we attended Sunday school you know, from an early age, so yes, I was raised in the church. You know, the older you get, don't you thank God for that? The, oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, uh, as a kid, I was church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and Friday night. They had a Friday night service then. Yes. And I, I'm just thankful. I'm just thankful for that. Mm -hmm. The wonderful teaching we got, the prayer. Boy, they yes. used to pray more than they do now. <laughs> That's for sure. And um, being around God's people. It's a good thing. Yes. Uh, and you became a teacher uh, in the public school system. Yes. And from what we read in the papers and all that, to be a teacher in the Detroit public school system could be very challenging, I guess, to put it mildly. Mm -hmm. That's quite mildly. <laughs> uh, I've heard sometimes, you know, their violence. And did you ever experience any of that? Uh, yes, there was some violence, but um, it wasn't as bad as it um, may, may um, seem. It was, you know, sometimes the students would fight each other, but that was pretty much under control. That wasn't one of their major problems there. Uh, I'd say their major problems are lack of supplies and, um, you know, lack of money for anything that you want to do in your classroom. So when I was teaching, I'm retired now, but when I was teaching, I often had to come out of my own pocket to buy things for the classroom and even for the students, too, because you want to see them succeed. You know, you know I've read stories like that. It just break my heart. And this is a very wealthy nation. Mm -hmm. it, it seems like it uh, shouldn't be necessary for teachers to have to do that. But God bless you mm -hmm. for your heart and uh, for, all, for all the teachers out there. I think we do not give them enough uh, attention. Right. A lot of times, and, and uh, thank, thankfulness. You taught in the high school. What did you teach? What? I taught high school English, and I also did teach some middle school also, but it was mostly um, grades 9 through 12. Right. And how many years? I've taught for 22 years. Right. Do you feel it was a calling? Um, yes, I did. I felt, because when I was growing up, you know, the teachers were more than just teachers. They were almost like part of the family. Um, they cared about you beyond just educating students. They were, they were almost like your mother or father and um, an extended family. Mm -hmm. And um, I really credit the teachers that I had in helping me to grow in a lot of different ways. And um, as you said earlier, that really is a calling that you know, it takes a lot out of you. It goes beyond just an eight-hour day. Yeah, teachers do a lot of work when they go home. Oh, yes. And all. That's for sure. But um, especially as I get older, I think of uh, certain things in life, and you can tell if the person's called. Mm -hmm. One of them's nursing. Yes. All right. If you don't have a called nurse, <laughs> God help you. <laughs> and a policeman. Mm-hmm. Right. And and teachers, and I think we maybe forget that there's probably some kind of a holy calling in there, you know, whether they recognize it or not. So I'm sure there is. God bless yeah. you for your service there. Now, the Leah factor. This lady, to me, is one of the most interesting in all of Scripture. Mm -hmm. What was it that drew you to her and her story? Okay, well, I think some of it comes from, as you said, being a teacher, I saw um, a lot of the interactions between students and things. Um, children, a lot of, you saw a lot of bullying and things like that going on. And there were some children, particularly young ladies, who had very low self-esteem. And um, it was sad to see, but um, that really 
it really affected me in a way. You know, I wanted to do something beyond just teaching. And I thought, well, you know, maybe this could speak to somebody else too. Leah, the character Leah herself was interesting to me because um, she didn't consider herself attractive. You know, she was around a beautiful sister. She didn't really um, understand her real potential. So it, hers was a story that really needed to be told. Yeah, and these young ladies you noticed in your classroom, mm -hmm. um, they were probably were not the pretty ones. Usually a school only had two or three beauty queens right. <laughs> than the rest of us. Right. And uh, so they, they felt very ordinary or less. And mm -hmm. Leah probably felt less. I mean, the Bible kind of tells us she was not real attractive. Yes, exactly. And uh, what was it? The Bible says she was tender-eyed. What does that mean? Well, I'm not really sure what it means, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that it meant the opposite of being beautiful because um, the scripture, Genesis 29, 17, says Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and highly favored. So that would seem to suggest that she wasn't beautiful. And I think that she probably um, internalized that um, most of her life and didn't feel, um, you know, it, that she was attractive. She probably developed a personality around that. And in my book, I talk about beauty going beyond just physicality. It's not just how an individual looks, but it's what's within. Which is very much the, the message of the book. And we do have uh, Cynthia's website on the screen. The name of the book is The Leah Factor. Um, they, were, they were victims of scheming, conniving men. Mm -hmm. yeah. And their father really, really saw Leah down the river. Yes. Uh, if, Probably most of the viewers are very much aware that Jacob was working for a man named Laban, mm -hmm. and he fell in love with the beautiful one, Rachel. And so I believe he was going to work seven years to get her. And at the end mm -hmm. of the seven years, they plan a wedding, and Laban pulls a fast one and right. gets Leah behind the veil. And uh, so he ends up marrying her and working another seven years for Rachel and end up with a husband and two wives, which exactly. has to be a nightmare. Oh, yes. This has to be. Um, you kind of are good at pulling out the dynamics of the family. There's obviously jealousy. Right, right. Um, jealousy was on two levels. Do you want to tell us why the girls were, they were kind of jealous of each other? Yes, exactly. Well, on Leah's part, it was because um, she was the unattractive sister, and uh, she did marry Jacob first, albeit through trickery and deceit, but mm -hmm. she was the first wife, and she was also the oldest daughter, so she should have had a position in life as the older daughter. She should have um, been in the position to, um, to have the preeminence, but she didn't because Jacob loved Rachel. He didn't love Leah. Um, the Bible even goes so far as to say that he hated Leah. So um, she has that to deal with. That um, she's uh, Her beautiful sister and herself are married to Jacob, and he loves Rachel but not her. So on her side, yeah, there was a lot of frustration. And then again on Rachel's side, there was also frustration because that was her um, betrothed, and her sister married him first. And um, the sister also was being blessed by God her womb was very fruitful. She had a lot of sons. Which Rachel, was huge in that day. Exactly, it was in the ancient culture. And uh, Rachel found herself barren, so there was frustration on her part, too. Mm -hmm. yes. You talk about the uh, prominence of beauty, and probably mm -hmm. it's always been that way. Yes. And it certainly is today yes. in America. Mm -hmm. And they the really beautiful ones are the ones who get the opportunities and and the attention and so forth where the ones that are really doing the work to humanity and for humanity and for the kingdom of god mm -hmm. don't quite get the attention as those knockout women yes yeah, sure <laughs> you uh write a, a part of a chapter in here you decide to go without makeup and mm -hmm. it, it created quite a stir <laughs> Yes, um, it was an interesting year. 
But I, um, I discovered I could get a whole lot more done. You uh -huh. know, I didn't wasn't worried about applying makeup and all that and taking it. Did off. you get a lot of uh, <laughs> why and? Um, not really. I mean, know. I think you're beautiful. So <laughs> well, thank you for a little makeup. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think um, that helped me when I took the focus off of how I looked. I could mm -hmm. understand Leah more and what I needed to say about her. Um, because it really isn't, beauty really isn't determined by what you put on or how you look outwardly. Um, I even argue that the best kept beauty secret is inner beauty. Um, it's what, what lies within a person. It really um, makes them who they are, makes them beautiful. As you got deeper and deeper into this story uh, in order to put it uh, in a book form, and studied the scriptures, did you see these roles and these um, kind of relationships change gradually and shift a little bit from the very beginning when mm. Jacob just so hot for Rachel, you know, that's right. all it was. And um, did you see a point maybe where Jacob took a second look and decided that Leah had a few qualities maybe that Rachel didn't? <laughs> well, it took him a long time. <laughs> it took Jacob a long time. Um, he was beginning to see some of that, but you got to remember Jacob was also deceitful. Mm -hmm. He was on the run from his brother Esau because he had tricked him out of the birthright. And he also went back and forth with Laban, with the, his father-in-law, you know, doing little deceitful things. As Laban tricked him into marrying the daughter. Jacob would manipulate the cattle to get the best deal out of the cattle. And he became very wealthy from doing that. Something kind of likable about <laughs> Jacob, <laughs> in spite of it all. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but later on he did have a, um, I guess it was the epiphany. You know, he, had, he wrestled with the angel of the Lord, and he did prevail. But he was also um, fearful because Esau was on his tail. Esau was coming after him, he thought. But um, later on, after their reunion, um, Jacob did seem to have an epiphany where he wanted Leah buried in the, um, in the revered birthplace of the forefathers and the matriarchs and the patriarchs. I've often thought that was just an eye-opener, mm -hmm. that Leah's the one that was really uh, buried with him. Right, right. And also, I think we can't overemphasize how very, very important it was back then to have as many children as you could, especially sons. Yes. And Leah was just, she just pregnant all the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, but then you had something else coming. That's why I think this whole family is a nightmare. <laughs> you got the father-in-law and you got, both men are wicked, really. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and the women are jealous of each other for different reasons. Mm -hmm. But then when the Lord was merciful to Rachel and she began to have children, Yes. Jacob favored her children. Yeah. And that would be very hurtful. Oh, yes. Like I said, it couldn't have been easy being Leah. Mm -hmm. um, but the dynamics in that family, it's just like um, there is nothing new under the sun. That's it, right. it, it had passed down from Jacob's parents. You know, and his, it's in Florida today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Both of his parents, um, um, Rebecca and Isaac, they each had the favorite son. Mm -hmm. You know, Isaac favored Esau because he was um, a hunter. Mm -hmm. And he liked the venison he cooked, while Rebecca liked Jacob. I mean, she favored him. Yeah, the, we've done a show on uh, that favoritism of uh, Isaac and Rebecca to their mm -hmm. sons, and it, it's it's ugly. Yes, it, right. It really is. Leah recognized the favor of the Lord. That's mm -hmm. pretty obvious. Rachel was no prize. She was a thief and a liar. Right. <laughs> we got a great family going here. Mm -hmm. But um, every once in a while in Scripture, you'll see, Leah is saying, the Lord favored me. Yes, right. I think Leah did recognize that, that, um, you know, that was obvious in the way she named her sons, mm -hmm. too. The names she gave them were, were names that honored the Lord, um, like Judah, her mm -hmm. middle son. That mm -hmm. means the praise of the Lord. Uh, Issachar called. Um, they all had names that sort of, you know, that gave glory and honor to God. So Leah did recognize where her help came mm -hmm. from. A sad part is where Leah is constantly seeking her husband's love. Yes. That, that would be so hurtful. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking of this and thinking of you as a school teacher. 
and no doubt you've seen this kind of thing in your classroom. It wasn't where a father-in-law, you know, was playing tricks, but where girls are bullied and because they're not as attractive as someone else. Mm -hmm. Did that have any influence when you were writing the book? Did you think of some of these modern, these today experiences? Yeah, yes, I did. And I, you know, I thought about how there is a whole different dynamic going on there too because a lot of times the bullies also had low self-esteem. It wasn't as if they um, had it going on and they were confident themselves. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it was ones that had low self-esteem that would bully others that, you know, maybe didn't have it, the physical good looks mm -hmm. that they did. But um, well, kids can and, be so cruel. Oh yeah, they can. They can be cruel, but then sometimes when you make them aware Mm -hmm. of the impact of what they're doing has, you do see a change. And I can say that sometimes they did stop um, that and the threat of being suspended. <laughs> it didn't help either. That helps too. Right. But sometimes you'll have that student that'll step up to that person who's being bullied. Mm -hmm. And I, I read stories like that and they're very, very touching. We're running out of time. But um, if you just joined us, we've been talking about a most interesting book called <clears throat> The Leah Factor. And it's all on the subject of uh, the lady in the Old Testament who really was not treated fairly by, by her dad or her husband or her sister or anything, but she really found favor in the sight of the Lord. The website is on your screen, and I hope you get it. And let me encourage uh, Sunday school teachers or women's groups uh, get this book. This, this would make a very, very, very interesting study. Uh, as I mentioned at the top of the program, Lee is one of my favorite uh, Bible characters. And this whole, what I call a whole mess, boy, we can learn a lot from it. And <clears throat> that, that's why it's in there. It's for our learning, for our edification. Thank you for coming. I'm telling you, this has been so enjoyable. I'm so glad to meet you. Thank you for having And me. I hope you'll take advantage of it. And, and, you know, remember, these were real people. They, these were people in the flesh with the same kind of problems that you face and I face, uh, but the smart ones, the intelligent ones, realized that anything that good came to them, it was from the Lord. Yes. We're out of time. Join me next time. Remembering, there's no higher calling than a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.